Hi there, welcome back to ADSR FM8 Tutorials. Going to be taking a look at the key scaling in FM8 today and chances are you've probably not spent too much time on this page of FM8 but it can actually be quite useful so it's going to be discussing everything that we can do on this page. So for starters we have A through to F, the six operators and we have like a key scaling here where we can kind of customize our own key scaling values and what this means is this is relative to note pitch and we can actually create we can actually create lower volume responses for each of these operators individual operators depending on where we hit the key so I could go in the moment I'm hitting a C3 on the keyboard I can actually dip this down so at the moment we can see the level there what's coming through I can customize that and one of the advantages of doing something like this is say if we were to very quickly create a lead sound and say operator D will boost the very rate will boost the ratio of this up a bit go back to our key scaling and go if we play a C3 note on this sound sounds quite nice if I go up too high this D operator D that we created where we boosted the ratio that becomes too loud in the sound and we're wanting to play a riff and we're wanting to span a few octaves with that riff or play some nice chords and stuff stack up some chords and go when we go anything above like a C4 that sound we don't like how loud this operator becomes we can actually tweak that in here so we could say up to C3 operator D the volume is fine but as of C4 and above too loud so I can control click the same way as you do with the envelopes I can control click in here and I can create extra nodes so I can go right up to C4 is fine after that I want it to kind of drop down I don't I don't want operator to D to be quite so loud and so what I'm doing now is any notes that are played above C4 say I can dip out the volume a little bit on operator D so when you're playing leads that are maybe getting a little bit too harsh and kind of nasty sounding when you're playing them up high up the keyboard you can dip off some of those those levels a little bit in the same way as if you had say a bass sound stacking up and we're using F was the sub in our bass sound so F the sub there and then E and D are kind of some upper harmonics say yeah we quite like the sound of that bass at C3 but when we start going down too low operator F which is creating that sub is getting too much and we want to play a bass sound that's spanning quite a few notes we don't want it to just be like a one note bass sound go to our key scaling and in the same way as we did before but in the other direction we can go right operator F is the kind of sub in our bass sound and when we play notes too low down the keyboard it just takes over the sound and gets too much so we can actually dip off the level of operator F on any notes be below say C3 or C2 same thing again I can just control click and add extra key scaling nodes and we can also like with the envelopes click the circles here and you can create curves and stuff like that so dipping off operator F now below kind of C2, C1 and stuff like that. So a lot of control and if you're ever working on any sounds you think yeah it sounds alright but when I play a note up here some of those frequencies are jumping out a little bit. You could go to this key scaling page and just quickly tweak some of those levels and stuff. So we also have we have operator X as well, so we have key scaling for operator X, which is the noise. So again, if you're adding some noise to a sound, have to activate the noise here a little bit. And you can 
do the same thing again. So when I play high up, the noise disappears. Lay down the keyboard, it reappears again. So further to that, we've got key tracking for the filter. So operator Z is the filter here. So let's root operator F through the filter. And at the moment, this behaves the way filters normally behave in a kind of musical way that when we play notes low down on the keyboard, the filter will naturally close a little bit and when we play notes higher up, it will open a little bit more. And that's kind of a natural way for a filter to behave. So we can actually customize the key tracking behavior of the filter here by again, control clicking. And so we don't want it to close so much on the kind of middle C note to be completely open or completely closed or we want when we play notes high up the keyboard we want it to filter out and again we just do the same thing control click and we can add extra kind of nodes and then we can the little circles in between the nodes we can create curves And you can do the same thing with the filter, although you're not affecting the volume of the filter, you're kind of closing, suppose this with the other operators you're using, you're dipping and peaking, you're affecting the volume of these operators with the filter, you're affecting the cutoff frequency here. So you're kind of, this is opening and closing according to what values we set in here and the note pitch. So these are great things if you want to get stuck in and to get your head around all that key scaling, key tracking a little bit and just have quite a lot of control over your sounds. You also get this as well, the micro tuning for the pitch. So we can affect this bit of tuning here if we just thought we wanted to retune the sounds a little bit here, hitting a C note. Or a C4 note or C3. I can affect the tuning of all the C notes or the D notes. If I wanted to just tweak some of the tuning, we get tuning presets here. It's a variety of different tuning presets that you can load up that are based on various kind of scales and stuff. And you also have this octave stretch parameter in here. So what this refers to, if I play like a middle C, have any effect on the sound really and if we apply a value in here above this white line so we're going into a positive value what this is going to do is if we play notes higher up the keyboard it's going to make them progressively sharper and it's going to make lower notes progressively flatter and if we reverse this and go into a minus value down here it means when we play notes higher up the keyboard they'll get progressively flatter and notes low down on the keyboard will get progressively sharper. So it's kind of mimicking the behavior of a real piano or a grand piano or something like that. So you can actually tweak the octave stretch settings in here. So hopefully that's kind of enlightened you on a little bit of key scaling and key tracking there. Any questions you've got on this tutorial, please get in touch. And also get yourself over to our website, fmhtutorials.com and get yourself subscribed to our YouTube channel if you're not already, youtube.com forward slash ADSRTUTS. All right, cheers. Bye.